So I'm here at the Pioneer Cemetery in Salem, Oregon. I pulled off the side of the road and stretched the legs, decided to check out what I thought was going to be a small, quaint little Pioneer Cemetery and discovered that not only is the Pioneer Cemetery quite massive, uh, it's also connected to another cemetery, the City View Cemetery, which is even more <laughs> massive. Uh, and so far I've seen some amazing stones and artwork. So I'm going to wander around, take a look around at this place. I don't have a whole lot of time to really explore, but let's take a look and see what we can find. This part, the base, remained upright and in its place, but obviously the top half, which has been repaired, was obviously on the ground, which leads to a lot of wear and tear, weather. It just ages differently. So we have this tombstone that is two very looking looks. This plot is interesting to me as you can see, I'll show you kind of what I'm seeing. We have two plots here, John and Esther Hall, wife of John. And then as we back up, we have Mary and Charles, obviously husband, wife, and then Nellie Hall, wife of George, which we have George here, but then in the corner of this family plot, we have a tiny little tombstone right there. And this stone is interesting to me because it's just a name, Rachel Gray. And that's it, no birthday, no death date, nothing, just a name. And it's, it's a very small and simplistic stone. So I can't tell what the relation is necessarily, why the stones are kind of different with no information. It could be uh, a baby that passed away. It could be maybe someone they wanted to, I don't know, recognize, but keep apart from the family. I'm not sure. It's things like that that, you know, makes you wonder about the story behind that family, those people, uh, and, I'm definitely interested now. It's very, very curious. One of the things I don't think we've kind of come across so far in our travels uh, that I would like to show you is that you see stone monuments, you see wood monuments. Uh, you notice at some point though, we see some, some metal ornaments. So let's take a look at that. So this one, very nice. Died August 1905, looks very clean, hollow. It is cast in, in metal, which means it's going to be here a very long time. You don't see a whole lot of damage on these kind of stones or markers. This one's got a little bit of cracking, but other than that, looks exactly like the day. 
It was placed in 1905. Another example of the metal monuments. That giant stone in the middle is a metal monument. Very ornate, super ornate. It looks great for how old it is. As you can see, the person it's memorializing was buried in 1898, along with the rest of the family. Here's another example of these uh, cast in metal monuments. This one, because I want to point this out to you because this is what I've been told about uh, a lot of these types, or I guess this is more rumor, more uh, urban legend, if you will. Some of them, as you can see, have a face plate on them. These parts right here, sometimes they can be removed and then you can remove that thing. Basically because it's, it's built, it's cast, and then they put it together. So this is a separate piece that's added once the monument is bought. Rumor has it, legend has it, that back in the day, if you had something like that, sometimes people would place things inside of it uh, for their visitors. So rumor has it, and I, I was told this by someone who was giving me a cemetery tour, is it wasn't unheard of for alcohol. A nice bottle of scotch to be placed within the tombstone so that when people would come and visit, they could sit down and have a drink with their loved one. Uh, I don't know if that's absolutely true. That's just what I've been told. But I think that's awesome. I think that's really cool. I would. I like the idea that there's like a, a hidden thing inside of a monument, uh, especially when it's, you know, sit down, have a drink with me. Remember the good times. There's something beautiful about that. This place is just so large. And I only have like 20 minutes left before I have to get back on the road and get to where I'm going. But this place is very, very awesome. So this episode will probably be just a lot of B-roll because I'm trying to document as many stones as I can between taking the normal photography and then, you know, the, the B-roll to kind of show you guys the stones I'm coming across. I had to stop and check out this stone uh, because not only is it very interesting, but there is literally the history of these people's lives written on the stone. So I'm going to, I'm going to make sure to film it and then you guys need to pause the video on the back of the stone so that you can read along.
impressed with this stone uh, because as you can see how ornate this flower work is I am very shocked that they're not snapped off broken off just due to how old the stone is it was placed in 1835 so the fact that it looks that good and it's still that ornate is pretty impressive I also love this tons of information on the cemetery itself I love when we can find stuff like this not only is there literally a diagram of the entire place but there's notable people information on them and information on the cemetery itself that's great because half the time you have you come into these places you kind of just have to figure it out for yourself or after the fact go online and look for the information so it's awesome that it it can be right there I wish it was like at the very front of the cemetery. So once you walk in, there's the signage, all the information. You can start your uh, walk around with that information, knowing what to look for and all that kind of stuff. But if it's here, I'm happy no matter what. That's going to bring me to the end of my walkabout inside of the Pioneer Cemetery in Salem, Oregon. It's a very fascinating place. A lot of excellent stones. It's a very well-kept place. Uh, I would love to spend another hour in here, maybe more just walking around and, and checking it out. But I have to take off. I have to leave. And next time I come down here, I'll be sure to make more time to visit this place as well as its neighbor, City View Cemetery. <laughs> That's just, it's just a lot. It's a lot, guys. Just looking over there, I would love to go over there and check it out. But until next time, later. As I was leaving, I just passed a, a woman walking her baby down uh, the little road in the cemetery, just taking a walk, taking her young child for a walk through a cemetery, and I couldn't help but think, careful lady, it's gonna turn out just like me.